Welcome, everybody, to the Connected Podcast. I have today my esteemed guest, Mr. Storm Leroy of Ask, Always Seeking Knowledge. Uh, and this guy is the truth. You know, everything I've, uh, I've learned about real estate and a lot about finances, and uh, we go way back. And uh, I'll tell you what, this is the guy you want to listen to. And so I'm so glad you're able to join my show today, Storm. Man, I appreciate being here. Um, man, it's an honor. It's, a, it's an honor and it's a pleasure. And uh, they could have been anywhere tonight, but they're here with us. And for that, I want to thank you. <laughs> exactly. That's they took the words right out of my mouth. So let's get it started, man. So, so you know, kind of going back, how did you get into the real estate game, into the development game? Uh, for me, real estate was uh, something that I got into when I know when I knew offhand that I didn't want to work anymore. Working mm. wasn't it for me. You know, I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always been into things. And you pretty much know a lot of my background for those that don't. You know, I've been into music. I've been into um, hacking things and all kind of that stuff. And then got into the lane of working. And um, I knew real estate was it. I wanted to invest in back in like 95. And I had some people with me that I took to see um, two buildings that this older gentleman wanted to sell. But they didn't see my vision on real estate and they would just encourage me. You know, 99 Brooklyn was pretty much everywhere was about crack. Yeah. Crack era. So the area wasn't that good, but I, I felt like, look, this will be a good investment regardless where uh, not, where it was located wasn't bad, bad, but still it was rental. It was owning. And they talked me out of it. And mm. that was that was like one of the situations I knew. And in 99, I revisited, revisited this whole thing of buying real estate when I went back to work and realized I didn't want to work. And automatically, my friend was in real estate, a realtor, and he took me to see some properties. And I said, I'm buying. And I mm -hmm. bought my properties. And from that moment on, I knew real estate was it. And um, But the key thing in buying real estate, that while doing the gut on my brownstone, I knew that um, I created another job for myself. You know, I had a job. I had to take time off, sick days to be at the site, use vacation days. And I'm like, you know what? What did I just do here? You know, we we get into this thing of the passion of wanting to do something. And then we actually get in and you realize you create another job. You know, we see those videos where someone says, I didn't want to work for anyone else. So I started my own business. Now I work all day. Like I didn't want to work eight hours for somebody else. But now I work 24 hours for myself. And I didn't want to work that many hours. So I stopped doing real estate, reinvented the real estate game. As far as I was concerned on my end, where I figured out investing out of state was the ticket for me and how to invest out of state without ever seeing the properties, without ever doing any work. I started changing my mindset from a landlord. And my, my motto is think like a CEO, not like a landlord. I changed my trajectory. Man, that's awesome. But but kind of going back, because you, you touched on a point, as you know, we're all about networking and connections and how the people we surround ourselves with um, actually uh, the impact the trajectory of our lives, right? All of the success that we have kind of comes through those relationships. And you mentioned that when you first went, when you first looked at real estate, the people around you talked you out of it. Yep. But then later on, the people around you showed you the game. Tell us a little bit more about that and, and how you kind of made that transition from having a circle of folks who weren't, uh, the, see, didn't see the vision to yeah, the people 100%. who did. 100%, which is so crucial, you know, and um, if you want to do something, you have to understand a very important piece here. Your mm -hmm. friends are your friends. They're not your cheerleaders when it comes to success. Like when you're seeking success and you're, doing something else that didn't align you with your friends in the first place. Like if you met them through basketball games or a relationship or cards or pool or the gym, now you can't t talk to them about, Hey, I want to be in the real estate. Uh, what do you think? I want to be an investor. It's like, what? You didn't meet them on those pretenses of talking about real estate. So don't expect them to be your biggest cheerleaders or your supporters. You cannot be a painter surrounding yourself by construction workers, you know, or someone who dances ballet, like that doesn't, that's not how it works. 
So my key thing was I had to surround myself with people who were looking into real estate that was into real estate, thinking about real estate, uh, looking at that trajectory of where they wanted to be. And something I always say is you can't talk to someone about freedom if the only thing they're going to reply back is when they got to be to work. Mm. Like, it doesn't work that way, bro. It doesn't no. work. That is that is deep. So so kind of pushing on that a little bit, what type of person? So for someone in the audience who's looking to get into re real estate, trying to replicate some of your success, what type of people do they need to have in their circle? You need to have first you need to find the circle. You're mm. not going to try to create the circle. You're going to go and invite yourself into a circle of like minded people, people that are getting into real estate. Go to these forums, go to these chat rooms. I always talk about biggerpockets.com. You go into there. That's where I found uh, three of my best mentors in, in biggerpockets.com. You know, and they told, taught me and told me a lot about out of state investing, po um, po uh, property management companies, how to do this correctly, how to look into that, how to think, how to now shift. And I took all this, all these lessons and stuff that they gave me, which was millions of dollars worth of their knowledge. And I now poly that into very little mistakes. When you hear someone continuously tell you, yeah, I got into this and I lost all my money. I came back and I did it again. I went, I lost all my money. I came back and did it again. But you know what? I didn't stop me. I went, put all my money in and then I succeeded. What you need to ask them is, did you have a mentor? Because if you would have had a mentor, it would only took you one loss. I lost money one time. And that one time is when I didn't listen to my mentor. Other than that, you need to have your mentor. Just like in the dictionary, the word mentor comes before money. Get yourself one. Wow, that's strong, Storm. That is strong. So, so I take it that uh, that you were able to find the the right mentor who was able to help guide you, and so you're kind of returning that now with your your mentorship uh, yeah. program. One hundred percent. Cool. Um, so that's but that is kind of a good question because a lot of people kind of know that they should have a mentor but they don't know how to get a mentor, right? It's, you know, I've always heard you don't get a mentor, the mentor finds you. Right. How, how do you do that? Well, two things about that. A lot of people know they need a mentor, but a lot of people are too, um, I won't say arrogant. Mm. They're, 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 they're scared or they feel like I want to do this myself because we, we, we're in this struggle on our own. We understand our own struggles. So it's like, I'm not going to go out and find somebody. I'm just going to go do it myself. You know, and we need to now stop that. It's like being it's so close to your destination and you know it's nearby, but you just won't roll the window down and ask somebody, where is it at? And they go, it's right there. And you just keep driving in circles and circles. Think about stop doing that and be willing to ask someone for help. Now, the thing about you don't find a mentor, a mentor will find you. That's true to an extent. But you have to be able to put out the right energy and the right, the, the right thing. And the right thing for me, I always say for people I talk to and um, that I've mentored outside of my mentorship classes is asking the right question. Mm. When you have the opportunity to speak to someone that's doing what you do. Don't ask them what was the worst deal you ever had. Don't ask them what was the best deal you ever had. Ask them a detailed question that would get their attention to let them know you're serious about what you're doing. If somebody asks me, Look, I'm looking to invest in out of state, but I've been looking in this market and the transportation isn't so close to where I think I want to invest in. So would that impact me investing out of state or should I be seeking to be nearby colleges or downtown? What you think is the return rate on that being that transportation isn't so close? Like when I hear somebody talk like that, they got my attention because I know they did some research. Oh, See? my God. So find the right question and your mentor will now find you and have the right answer. That's right. the terminology of that phrase. Not just sit on your hands and a mentor is going to go, I want to help you. No, the mentor is going to find you when you ask the right question. If you ask a real dumb, like one of these questions that make no sense, it's like, okay, I didn't find them yet. The mentor is going to say, I didn't find them yet. Wow. Wow. So what I'm hearing is ask intelligent questions. Don't just ask general questions that anybody can answer. Or you could Google, you know, because I think I've heard that before. Like, don't ask me a question that Google can answer for you. Yep. That's, uh, that's powerful. So, 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 so 
where could you ask my next question was going to be about ask and, and where that comes from but i think that you just answered that question uh on well, ask uh, the movement well ask the yeah, movement, ask, ask always, the movement. Seeking. Always, always seeking knowledge what, what, always uh, seek knowledge i've yeah. created this because i wanted people to be able to understand the power of asking a question yeah it's the That's, power that's strong. And, and I always tell, and this one thing that I coach a lot is, you know, the, the quality of your life comes from the quality of your questions, right? What, what questions are you asking that determines what, what answers you get in life, right? So asking better questions leads to, to more success. So that is kind of cool. So, so where, where are you trying to go with your career now? I mean, what is, what is the goal? Where, where, are, you, where are you taking your, your business? Well, now I'm transitioning into more of teaching. Like now that I've been doing podcasts and I have some, somewhat some success in my views and things like that, um, I'm going to be doing a lot more speaking on a few more podcasts. And I'm going to be really separating a lot of the real estate empire for me, which runs itself. Remember, I don't see the properties. I've never seen 30 some odd properties. And now I'm going to focus more on speaking more on mentoring, more on doing master classes, and now introducing myself to people who feel like they couldn't be involved in real estate because it was too expensive and teach them. Once you think like a CEO, you will change your trajectory and realize that I'm not here to tell you to become a homeowner and buy houses. Like all those real estate people, and I'm one of them at once one time would tell you, buy your place, rent it out, get a duplex, get a fourplex. But think about this. In these areas where it's so expensive, these, these other programs of the NACA, the, these uh, programs don't fit. But you still can buy real estate as an investment and make money off of them and still be a renter because the CEO does the same thing. He doesn't own this tall high rise he's in. He's Lisa renting the space. He has a viable business making his rent 20000 Okay, he makes 300000 That office space is for free. So stop thinking you need to only live in a property you own in order to be a part of investing in real estate. Don't think that way. Get into investing. Think like a CEO. Wow, that is that is strong, man. You have dropped so many jewels a day, I'm telling you. Um, so how, how, can, how can the audience get in contact with you? What's the best way to reach you and get more information? The best way to reach me is um, uh, askthemovement.com. You can go there and you really could... Um, email me. And if you want to know more about my courses and my mentorship, I have a program that I call the uh, Employed Millionaire. You go to employedmillionaire.com and you'll see the package that talks about my courses, how to set up your LLCs and legacy wealth building, which I'm very big on. I talk big about creating a living trust, following the Rockefeller's trust pattern to how you can leave your fourth, fifth generation, $14 million dollars with a simple life insurance policy. Like for me, it's bigger than real estate. Once you gain wealth, how are you going to transition that wealth to your generations is what I teach. And employedmillionaire.com gives you those courses, those instructions and mentorship. Ask the Movement is my big umbrella of teaching people that I'm now doing more speaking engagements with. And Instagram, of course, you can find me. I am Storm Leroy. That's awesome, man. Well, Storm, thank you so much for coming through and yeah. dropping some knowledge on how uh, how we can all uh, have a piece of this American pie. And yeah, really appreciate brother. you and uh, hopefully talk again soon. Have a great well, one. I appreciate you. Yeah. Peace, right?